What's going on guys? Levi here. Welcome back to the Troublemakers Guild, previously known as the American Redhead. The Troublemakers Guild to me rolls off the tongue a little bit better, so I changed the name. Anyways, point of today's video, we're going to go over my inch bag. So, you may be looking at this and you might be thinking, that is a massive bag and what is this contraption that it's on? I'll get into that, um, either in this video or in a later video, but today we're just going to be talking about what is inside my inch bag. Um, the title probably said bug out bag, just full disclosure, that's a little bit of clickbait. It's an inch bag, not a bug out bag. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started with what is on the outside of the bag. First and foremost, at the very top here, this is a uh, blabber, solar powered battery bank. So that's for charging you know, cell phone or whatnot. Um, in fact, what's kind of cool is it has the thing here on the back where you can just set your phone on top of it and it'll start charging. You don't even have to plug the phone in. So a good feature there. Metal Nalgene bottle. This is a single walled bottle, which means I could throw this directly in the fire and it would still be fine. It's not going to blow up on you like a vacuum sealed bottle would. So there you go. Metal Nalgene bottle. All right. Next up, keep it on the side of the pack. We have the uh, Silky Katana Boy. This is the 500. And this is a bad mama jamma right here. Big old saw. I also keep a spare blade in the pouch as well. Just in case this one dulls or whatever, I can replace it. Alright, really important feature here. This is my IFAC. I got this from a skinny medic store. Medical Gear Outfitters, I believe is the name. It's a quick detach IFAC. You have your trauma shears on the side and then on the inside. All bleeding control stuff. Got a cat tourniquet, gloves, threw my NPA and lube in there. Compressed gauze and an emergency tr uh, trauma dressing as well. This does not have a hemostatic agent. That would be something I might consider adding in the future. But for now, this is good enough. I can definitely, uh, or you could definitely do a lot with a little IFAC such as this one. On the other side of the pack, uh, compared to the Katana Boy, I keep my Grand Force Brooks splitting hatchet. Kind of a unique design. It has a pretty heavy head on it designed for splitting, but it's a hatch instead of a full size splitting axe, which would be just way too cumbersome to carry. Uh, even this is a little heavy. I think the, uh, the head is like two pounds, which is considerable, especially for this application. But this is the an axe that will stand the test of time for sure. So that's why I got it. And of course, very sharp from the factory. And this one has the little collar here, which will protect it from an overstrike or uh, just splitting wood in general, if it's a harder piece of wood or whatnot, that'll help protect it. Um, so your handle will last you a little bit longer. Here at the bottom, uh, we just have a closed cell foam sleeping pad. Pretty sure that one's made by Thermarest, maybe C to Summit, something like that. Uh, basically, I'm running this as a ground level, then I'll have an inflatable insulated bag, or sitting pad rather, on top of that, and I'll get to that one there in a minute. Now looking at the top of the bag, we have a little pouch here that can carry a bunch of stuff. I typically uh, keep things that I need to get you a little bit quicker in there, so let's go ahead and go through that and I'll show you what's in there. Alright, first little group of things. have some Manzella windbreaking gloves. And uh, for not being a lot of money, these things work pretty well. In fact, it's getting pretty chilly up here. I might need to throw these on here in a sec. Following that, we have a Carhartt beanie. Just can't go wrong with one of those. We have an SA Company face shield. That could provide extra warmth as well as provide protection from the sun. So it's dual purpose. Same with these. Also from SA Company, these are basically sleeves for your arm. Uh, could add a little bit extra warmth, but mainly this is sun protection. And then we have a Shamog as well. Same thing as last video I made a few years back. I do not, do not know how to tie these things up, but 
I'm sure you can improvise, figure something out when you're in the heat of the moment. All right, following that, just a rain poncho, um, disposable, although you could reuse it in a pinch and there's tons of different uses for a rain, pon rain poncho as well. Um, keeping rain off you as well as collecting rain if you needed to, uh, so dual purpose. And then we also have a little Lucy Lantern. This thing is inflatable, so it'll expand. And almost similar to a milk carton, it's kind of an off, not completely translucent, it's kind of a white color. And that will reflect some of the light a little bit better, so you can use it inside your tent or around camp or wherever. So there you go. And there's a few different brightness settings and modes. So you got just your standard light, brighter, strobe, then you got red uh, SOS as well as constant red. All right, in the top, I also keep a pair of smart wool socks. Uh, these are the work variant, so it's gonna be a little bit tougher, perhaps a little bit warmer as well. Most importantly, got the American flag stitched at the top, so it's patriotic as well. This thing here is pretty cool. Uh, got this from Verustaleka including the bag itself, which I forgot to mention what that is, so I'll mention that in a moment. Uh, this is made by Savada. It's basically a five, I believe it's a five gallon, if not liter, uh, water bag. So you can go to a stream like what we have behind us, throw it in there, fill up this bag, then when you set it on the ground, it'll actually expand, so you don't spill any of your water out. Uh, there's a reinforced collar at the top here, that gives it a little bit more stability and again prevents that water from just pouring out. Um, I've seen on their website they promote it as um, just a tote to carry water. You can use it like a sink or actually they have a picture of even a dog drinking from it so you can use it as an improvised water bowl if you need to. Seems mean. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right, so now that I mentioned it, the bag itself. This is the Jakari XL. Uh, my Finnish is not very good. Sorry if I mispronounced that, but it's made by Savada, and it's a very big bag, about a hundred liters. Yeah, hundred liters, and that's with this top part fully extended. So this is actually a folding design. You can fold it and roll it up, then it'll clamp shut and um, works very well. There's actually some, uh, like a waterproof finish on the inside of the bag that will obviously keep some of the water out. Uh, the outer material, I believe is a Kadura, uh, as most bags are nowadays, at least the tactical style bags. So uh, I'm liking it so far. It's fitting pretty much everything I would need for a prolonged period of time, so I'm very happy with it. And while we're at it, the cart that it's on, this is the Hawk game cart. Uh, I did my research and I figured a cart would probably be easier in the long run. I'm gonna save some, save some calories for sure. Uh, and is that true? I don't know, we just hiked three miles and mostly uphill is kind of a pain. But 120 bucks on sale is a good price, so I'm happy with it so far. You're prepared for the kill. Well, for the apocalypse, it's something. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you guys from? Uh, Denver. Oh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Where I'm from, Missouri. Okay. We're, man, about here. We're camped out about a mile over. Could have killed moose over there two different days. So you're just gonna stay here, pack it up, and go. Exactly. Okay. 
I thought buying this cart would help. No, <laughs> it did not help. <laughs> you got to pull that thing. Hey, uh, yeah, well, I'm in for a world of, world of hurt. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll You're going to sleep well. <laughs> well, good luck to you guys. Thank Thanks, you, man. Good good luck. Luck. You too. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, now reaching into the main compartment of the bag. Uh, this is the bug out roll. And this is basically from Canadian Prepper's website, uh, Canadian Preparedness, as one might expect. Uh, it's pretty pretty cool. So if we unclamp this thing, open it up, it'll just roll right open. And you can see there's quite a bit of goodies in there. Let me see if I can get that all on frame. Nope, not even all in there. Let's lower this a little bit. Quite a bit of stuff. So, I'll get further into this in another video, but this is a prime example of where an inch bag and a bug out bag differ. It's obviously not going to carry this much stuff in a bug out bag, but in an inch bag, you're in a different situation entirely, so you just need more stuff. But again, we'll get more into that in a later time, and um, I'll go ahead and cut to probably another day when I actually go over what is in this bug out roll right now. All right guys, let's go over that bug out roll. So first and foremost, it's important to keep in mind that positioning will probably change for some of this stuff, especially if it's an item that I'm gonna wanna get to a little bit more often, like for example, a night guard. So if you grind your teeth, you probably know when you sleep that is, you probably know what a night guard is, but this is for that exact purpose. So I keep an extra set in my inch bag so um really this is probably not even going to go in the bug out roll this is going to go in one of the front pockets or something but there we go that's the first item all right starting with this top left corner this is where i'd keep my electronics air quote first and foremost i have batteries for pretty much everything i need a battery for so this is include going to include stuff on my bump helmet flashlights on my guns optics and um, any other little mini electronics that I might have. So double A's, triple A's, 123's, one dash threes, or slash threes, whatever, they're all in here. And this is stored in a lock sack bag, so it's watertight. This is just another end cap for my flashlight that's on my main rifle. So if the pressure switch breaks, then I'll have this as a backup. Assuming the light itself isn't broken. All this is is a spare cord. And this is primarily for my battery bank. This will allow me to plug my phone in directly. This is a Streamline MicroStream. I think you're getting about 40 lumens out of this thing. But it's a nice little handy uh, just backup flashlight. That said, I also keep this Olight 3T EOS, which has two different brightness settings. And then this is the lanyard that actually came with the Streamlight, but I figure I'll probably be using the Olight more. So you have a low setting, and you have a high setting. Basically a beefier version of the Streamlight MicroStream. So in this pocket right here, keep a few goodies in there so first and foremost I keep a few bobby pins just cuz I don't know you can find a bunch of uses for bobby pins so I keep those in there this is the vortex solo monocular it is a eight times magnification with a 25 millimeter objective lens uh, I think that's the right term right also keep a weatherproof notebook. This is basically a right in the rain. Then I have a pencil and two pens and a Sharpie in there as well. These are just little cards to help you tie some knots. And this one here has some other survival tips on it. This was a little ruler. It's kind of pretty neat. This one's from um, Randall's Adventure and Training. Got it when I bought my SE knife. And this one I got when I bought my paracord. 
And the last for that pocket, we have just some, uh, what would you call this? Lens cloth for my optics. This is my medicine pouch. So let's go ahead and take a look at that stuff. First off, we have some moleskin. You use this uh, on your feet in case you start to get blisters when you're hiking days on end. So that's very important there. Chapstick, can't leave home without it. Ibuprofen, this is my miracle drug. I use this for everything pain related. Also got some Pepto. Um, this will help with a bunch of stuff. As you can see, diarrhea, that's the main one. So don't want to get dehydrated and die. So um, this will help prevent that. These here, these are just Alka-Seltzer cold and flu medicine. Power Max. Apparently it expired, but whatever. I'll replace it eventually. All right, here we got some Red Cross toothache medication. So basically what this does is you will take a cotton pellet, dip it in this stuff, put it on your tooth and it'll numb everything up. Toothaches suck, so there you go. All right, next row, fire. These are ProCam Tech fat rope sticks. What I really like about these is you can actually just pull out a little strand of it, kind of like this. You can see I've already used it. And this works as a lighter extender. So if I take my lighter here, there you go, just like that. That way you don't have to keep using the fuel of your lighter. You could just use this thing. So I got two of those. Also have two lighters. And then of course I still have my uh, fire boss kit as well. So I mean you can see there what all is included. But important ones are the main ones. Got a ferrocium rod, jute twine, matches, a couple candles, and then etc. There's also a uh, one of those lenses. It's slipping my mind what it's called. But you can use the sun. So there you go, fire boss. That's my food pouch. First and foremost, we have a backup set of cutlery. So we have a knife, fork, and spoon. Nowadays, I pretty much exclusively use the Sea to Summit spoon that I have with my freeze dried meals. But this serves as a backup. Uh, the reason I actually swapped from these to that is because. This spoon is pretty prone to bending, as you can see there. So I don't really trust it as much. This is just like a little goodie bag. So we have some uh, bouillon cubes, some limeade black cherry, Folgers coffee, cough drops, and tea, as well as some salt and pepper packets. So this would just spruce things up a little bit and uh, also give me a little caffeine if the need arises, even though I'm trying to quit caffeine, but whatever. Most important part of that pouch whoops, is the Firebox Mini, or the Nano, I think is what it's really called. So this is basically a wood stove that's super small, folds up, and... Um, it's dirty. This was in my original kit as well. So if you've seen my old video, you've seen this. But it's really cool. And it's a little bit more sustainable than something like a uh, like an MSR Pocket Rocket. Which, admittedly, on this last trip, we used a whole bunch. But when shit hits the fan, you know, you're not going to be able to find butane as easily as you'll be able to find wood. I also have a couple can openers in there as well. Next row. A 
got some paracord here and admittedly i don't remember if this is 550 or 750 it's one of the two i know i've had both before this is from the guy that sent me the little cards about how to tie a knot as an amazon account um, or an amazon store i should say so i'll leave the link to that and of course all the other stuff in the bio but check them out it seems like a good company good guy In addition to the paracord, I also have some bank line here. And pretty sure this has a tensile strength of like 300 pounds. So definitely not as tough, but it's a lot thinner and would be better for uh, like crafts, like making chairs or something, or using as intended as a bank line. This stuff is coated with like a waxy material um, as com uh, compared to paracord. So it's not as prone to slipping or you're having your knot slip for that matter. So there you go, bank line. This neat little thing, this is called the Deuce of Spades. It's made in Colorado, which is cool. And you can see there it weighs 0.5 ounces. So it's ultra lightweight. It's a miniature trowel or shovel. Pretty cool, I mean, I figure why not have it. This is just the pocket clip for my knife. I'll probably end up throwing this away to be honest because I have my knife just tied up to the uh, strap of my backpack. But for now, it's in the bug out roll. Alright, this is my utility pouch. Got just a cheap Smith's knife sharpener. Not the best out there by any means, but it, it'll work at a pinch. And then this is a uh, sharpening stone for my axe as well. Of course, you can sharpen your knife on there too if you wanted to. Uh, but the core side will help repair any damages like a nick. And then the finer side will sharpen it up nice and sharp. Keep uh, some extra tape in there as well. Just a little bit of electrical tape and a little bit more duct tape. So, I mean, I don't even have to get into all the uses for this stuff. You already know. But... Uh, figured there was a necessity to at least have the duct tape in the inch bag kit. Keep a spare knife in there as well. This is just an old S-Wing I've had for pretty much my entire life. But I reground this to a Scandi grind. And this thing is just stupid, scary sharp. So, um... I wouldn't say this is a hard use knife, but for some some of the finer tasks, this would work really well for that. This is just a little gun cleaning kit that I put together. So I have brushes for the 9mm and the 5.56 or 223, which will also work with the 22. Mops for both calibers. We have a brush, oil, this is like a handle, and then also threw in some of this um, Otis CLP as well. These are wipes, and there's two of them there. I would prefer to have a small bottle of CLP or an actual cleaner, but you know what? These are relatively cheap, and they're a lot easier to throw into a kit like this. So there you go, stored in a lock sack. Next row, when we get to our first long pocket. First off, some mechanics work gloves. I found pretty quickly, well, I shouldn't say that, but I found on day three of pushing that cart around that gloves are pretty much a necessity. Uh, my hands were pretty much raw on the palms. So these will help prevent that and also for anything else that requires grabbing stuff maybe with pokies on it or just something warm maybe you have a pair of gloves for that just keep a couple little bungees in there as well i mean these things are not very big or tough but nice to have and you know what i actually have Two of these at the bottom of my bug out bag or inch bag anyways for holding on my foam sleeping pad. So say if I lose one, there you go, I have backups.
All right, so here we have the Amazon Basics Cable Keepers. And, uh, you know, they're reusable and they're somewhat useful. So that's why I have those. Then I also have some reusable zip ties as well. So um, best of both worlds right here. Key in point here is the uh, Amazon Basics Cable Keeper in use now to keep my three mil contractor grade trash bags together. So there you go, I think I have two of them in there. And then these are Catula micro spikes. So what you do with this is when there's ice on the ground, you just throw them over your shoe and it'll give you a little bit more traction. That way you're not slipping and falling and cracking open your head and dying. So there you go. All right, next long row, food procurement. That's the thing I got roasted for the most in my old video. So I listened. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got in there. All right, these are snares. And unfortunately in Colorado, it's illegal to actually use these to trap animals. So I haven't been able to test them out uh, in the field. But from what I can tell, it's pretty straightforward to set these things up. And when the apocalypse happens, who cares what the government says? I mean, it's all about survival now. Same situation with these. These are yo-yo fishing reels. As far as I know, they're not legal, but they might be as long as you only have one out and you're attending it at all times. But this is basically a fishing reel that you can use, um, which would allow you to step away and do other stuff while you're fishing or while you're yeah while you have this in the water fishing so let's see if i remember how to set this up all right quite simply you just hang this up in a tree have your line sticking out in the water fish comes and bites it you can see the little lever will move out of place and it'll set the hook so easy enough i know these are real popular down south for catching catfish but again haven't had a chance to try it myself but got four of those just in case These lines also came with the yo-yo fishing reels. These are heavy duty rat traps. Again, not illegal to actually hunt with in Colorado, but when shit hits the fan, this will hopefully give me a squirrel or a chipmunk or something. So there you go. To go with the rat traps, I also have some peanut butter. These are all expired, so that's why I'm not keeping them with my uh, rations but shit i mean as long as the apocalypse happens relatively soon i bet you this stuff is still good to eat so as a worst case scenario that's an emergency ration but the main intention of keeping them in here is to help me trap some more sustainable food and more uh, substantial food to go with the yo-yo fishing reels we have some extra line and here I have a little kit, got some hooks, bobbers, re, uh, weights, and um, some swivels in there as well. So there you go, fishing stuff. Also keep a pair of needle nose pliers in there. This is mostly for the snares, so uh, in case they get bent or something, this help me bend it back into shape. While not really for food procurement, I do keep this in the same pocket. This is actually for adjusting my cart if needed. So uh, tightening wheels, loosening wheels, or whatever. This is all you need. Almost done. Second to last pocket here. We got a lot of use out of this on our trip. This is the Sawyer Mini Water Filter and the Squeeze Water Filtration System. Yeah, this is a, a lifesaver. Um, if you've never used a water filter before, or if you want to get into backpacking or something, you're going to want to pick one of these up. I also took the recommendation that I got from the last video, and I no longer keep this in a lock sack. I actually keep it in the mesh pocket here. That way it has the ability to air out and dry. That way you don't get mildew and gross stuff like that. Sticking with the same theme here, I have aqua tabs and potable aqua and iodine tablets. So 
This is just for purification purposes. Doesn't necessarily filter, but will make stuff safe to drink after you do a rough filter. So for clarification, you don't have to use a Sawyer Mini and then this after. You can just do one or the other. But if you do use these, you're going to want to filter the water through maybe a Shemog or something, which is another use for that. All right, this is just a little boo-boo kit. So we got, uh, you can kind of see there, sting relief pads, band-aids, got some tape. And then I threw something else in there. I don't quite remember what it was. Let's see what this guy is. Blister relief, okay. Threw a blister relief kit in there as well. Waterproof container as well. In the same pocket, I also have some Repel bug spray. Apparently DEET is better because it lasts longer, but this is just what was available and I didn't know any better, so that's what I got. Surprisingly, bugs are not really that bad in my area. Alright, and this is my little hygiene kit. Got some soap, more soap, tweezers, chapstick, whiskey wipes, floss, a razor, and I think shampoo and conditioner in there as well. Yep, most of the stuff I stole from my hotel, so someone was very confused when I said that last time. But when I say I stole it from a hotel, it means I was staying and I just took it, so there you go. All right, guys, last pocket, clothing. Keep a couple pairs of that good swag in here. These are polyester socks from Adidas. They are not cotton. These are pretty much what I wear every day anyways, so gives me a little bit of familiarity, I suppose, when the world goes to shit. That being said, there's literally nothing better than wool when it comes to socks and many of your other clothing for that matter. So I keep four pairs of um, smart wool socks. These are thicker hiking socks and then the rest of these are a little bit thinner. The orange ones are ski socks and these guys are just your day-to-day -day socks. So in conjunction with a warm pair of boots any of these should be sufficient or if not I can always throw uh, this pair on over these or I do have that fifth pair uh, that I keep in the large pocket as well. So there you go some smart wool socks. I also have a base layer pant. I don't have the base layer shirt. I should probably get one of those, but I figure I'll probably have more jackets than I will layers for my legs. So I do keep one of these in there as well. And last, but certainly not least, boxers. Um, I'll probably swap these out for some uh, boxer briefs instead, some that are not made out of cotton like these are. But there you go. I mean, really, if you get wet, you can always take them off. You don't really need these, but I prefer to wear boxers, so there you go. Well, actually, I prefer briefs nowadays, but still, these were just extra, so I threw them in there. Well, I was going to take this out because it's kind of junk and my compass broke, but, you know, I generally know my area like the back of my hand, but this helps to show the roads and everything in Colorado. So if for whatever reason I need to leave my area to get to somewhere else, I can at least know how to get to the highways and where they will lead. So I'm going to keep this in there as well. Okay, so for my tent, I'm rocking the Snug Pack Bunker. The reason I chose this one is it's not overly massive, but it is also a four-season tent. Um, this whole kit, this is a four-season kit. And I live in Colorado. I mean, it's late September and my hands are already cold. So you can imagine uh, November, December, January, it's going to get freezing. So having a four season tent is crucial in my opinion, as well as having um, two sleeping pads and insulated being, ins one of them being insulated, as well as a few other things in here that I'm going to show you momentarily. But four season tent, this is a two person, maybe three person tent, don't quite remember but uh, you'll see annotations or whatever. So far from the few times I've brought it out uh, to date, it's served well, but we're definitely gonna do some more experimenting with it, including some winter camping, which I'll have another video for that later on. But there you go, snug pack, bunker. <laughs> Alright, 
Next up in the back, this is a collapsible kettle. Uh, kind of a neat little thing. Really does the same thing the Nalgene bottle does. So this is more of a, uh, a redundancy. So this may or may not stay in the bag, but for now we've obviously used it and it does what it's supposed to do. So it's pretty cool. And then this is a Miltech um, rain cover for the bag itself. And it fits almost perfectly, maybe a little bit on the sides that are still showing. But I think, especially on the cart itself, this would be good enough. Yeah. Um, if nothing else, if it is worse than what this would call for, then I do have a tarp inside here that I'm about to show you momentarily. So one of the distinguishing factors in a inch bag versus a bug out bag is when you prepare an inch bag, the expectation is you're never coming home. So it's wiser to keep a little bit more food in the bag than what you would normally keep in your bug out bag. With that in mind, at all times, I'm gonna keep a minimum of five days worth of food in my bug out bag. And that's five days without rationing. So if I needed to push this out further, I certainly could. Uh, what I did is I took everything I would need uh, basically my provisions for one day. I vacuum sealed them all together and on the bag itself I wrote down how many calories is contained in the vacuum sealed pack. So this is my lightest one right now at 1893 calories. Um, this is short for a day of course obviously a 2,000 calorie diet is um, a minimum out here when you're trying to survive especially during the winter time. Uh, that being said uh, we're on a four-day backpacking trip right now so I'm gonna eat this stuff literally when I'm done with this video so um, in this spe specific pack I have an ice cream sandwich as a snack three meals um, one breakfast and then a, a lunch and a dinner which can be interchangeable also threw a pack of M&Ms in there this is a little folding cup which is pretty neat it is eight ounces so it will help me measure the amount of water I need for the food that is in these packs um, I also have a couple Wissy Wipes in here, kind of following or getting inspiration from like an MRE or something where they throw toilet paper in there. Figured not a bad idea to throw it in here as well. And um, that's just one of them. And some of my others, I have like uh, oatmeal, you can see here, instant oatmeal. I have uh, peaches, dried peaches and another one, astronaut food is a brand. Speaking of brands, it varies, Mountain House, Peak and Backpackers Pantry are the three that I have in here, um, not including like the ice cream sandwiches and stuff, which is astronaut food. So there you go, five days of food, ranging from 1,890 calories up to, I think, 2,400 calories for my uh, heaviest one. Yeah, compared to Zeke, his most heavy one is 2,700 calories, but I mean, he's like twice my size, so there's that. All right, in the pack, keep a three liter Source Tactical water bladder. And the reason I chose Source is because you can get the UTG for it. Uh, I think it stands for universal something, something, I don't know. But it connects to the end of your tube and it allows you to fill up your hydration bladder with a water bottle or something comparable, even a tap, without having to remove this from your backpack. It's a pretty handy little tool. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but for that reason and pretty much that reason alone, I went with this guy. So there's plenty of other good ones out there. Of course, Camelback, apparently MSR makes a really durable one. And then, um, you know, there's even some that are made out of plastic, like a thicker plastic, but that's the one I chose. And uh, now you know why. Now finishing up with the main compartment, this is the SOL or survive outdoors longer survival blanket. Uh, it's basically a tarp, so it's a lot thicker than a standard Mylar blanket, and it serves two purposes. Again, uh, you can use it as a tarp, you can use it as a reflective survival blanket, uh, etc. So keep that in there. I really wish it was green instead of orange or tan or just another color, but um, this is all I have right now. So if they ever release the same thing, but in green or another earth tone, I'll probably buy it and replace this one. But for now, this will work. If stealth is the issue, uh, 
you could put the reflective side out and it would work kind of like a mirror, especially in a wooded area like this. But that's not the, uh, the end all be all, is that the term? It's really not ideal, but it'll work in a pinch. So there you go. You can also use that actually to line the bottom of your sleeping bag, or not sleeping bag, your tent. Or you can even put it underneath the tent to um, ensure that your tent stays in better condition for longer. Or if you put it on the inside, it'll help keep you warmer. So um, again, multi-use for that item there. All right, so now the bottom compartment of this bag, that's where I keep my sleep system and then a few other items that are kind of a little bit more necessary to keep readily accessible. So we'll start with the sleep system first. Perhaps the least important thing, this is the Alps Mountaineering uh, Versa Air Pillow. It's really small, it was like 20 bucks and it's inflatable. And um, there's actually, there actually is a patch kit in here. So if it you know, leaks, you know, get the hole for some reason, you can fill that or patch that hole. And um, I've actually used it three or four times maybe around there and it works quite well. So um, for the money, not a bad option and it weighs very little. Of course, ounces equal pounds, but whatever. This is the Climate Static V. This is an insulated sleeping pad with an R value of 4.4. This will keep you warmer in up to, or down to, I should say, around negative 25, if I'm not mistaken. So compare that to the normal Static V, um, which is an R value of, I believe, 1.4, which Zeke tried to throw up to me, but I didn't quite make it. This thing here. The R value of this is a 1.4. So this is really more of a three season sleeping pad. That said, if Zeke were to get a foam one and throw this on top of it, it would definitely serve him better um, in a colder environment. Or he can just upgrade to one of these, which I told him he should probably do anyway. So uh, there you go. And climate static V, in my instance, the insulated sleeping pad. This seems a little underflated. I'd, I'd throw a little bit more in there. This is the Snug Pack Jungle Blanket. This is kind of to use either outside of the tent or on a really cold night, I can throw it over my sleeping bag. Um, I usually find that this rolls right off. Um, that being said, say if I were to use this bag in the summer, which is a possibility, this, uh, this isn't just a winter inch bag, this is an all season inch bag. So if I needed to grab it during the summer, and it doesn't necessarily call for the use of my sleeping bag, I'll use this in conjunction with my sleeping bag liner, and it should do a fairly good job of keeping me warm. Uh, no temperature rating on this or anything, it's just a blanket. Um, 700 grams for the weight, 25 ounces, 76 inches by 64 inches, so it's a fairly large blanket, a little bit bigger than a Wubby, which is really what this is designed to be similar to. Maybe not as functional as it would be because I don't think you can use it as your poncho liner, but um, I'm not going to use it as a poncho liner anyways. This is my Sea to Summit Reactor Extreme Sleeping Bag Liner. They actually just came out with a new version or a new liner that's even warmer than this one. But at the time, this was the warmest one. And according to their website, it'll add 25 degrees to your sleeping bag. So a very impressive addition and very necessary for a Colorado winter. Or even during the summer or maybe even fall, like right now, if you are running a cooler sleeping bag, meaning one that's not rated for as low of a temperature as you really need, this would really just go the extra mile to make sure you stay comfortable or safe for that matter. But now the main show here, this is my sleeping bag. This is a Polar Ranger negative 20 degree bag from Thermarest. So this is an absolute unit. Uses down, I don't remember the fill power, but I'll put that up on the screen. And this has kept me warm in some pretty, pretty cold temperatures. And then we're, we're really gonna test it later on this year, hopefully. And uh, again, will be another video for that, but we'll do some winter camping with all this gear and 
you'll get and I'll get a better first hand experience with this thing. Well, something unfortunate happened literally the next day or two days after filming what was in my bag on the same trip even. And it happened to my sleeping bag. You can see here that is a patch. So what happened was I was unzipping my bag for the night to hop in and this material got caught in the zipper and it just tore open. So fortunately this patch actually came from my pillow. So um, the reason I'm showing you this is because it's good to prepare for these kind of things and to have backups, whether uh, you buy an aftermarket patch kit or you just use the one that's in your other stuff or uh, whatever. I mean, this doesn't have to apply to just patching stuff, but in general, prepare for worst case scenarios because you might be in it. So pretty unfortunate that my $800 sleeping bag got a hole, but pretty sure Thermarest has a warranty so I can send it in and hopefully they'll fix it. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention it, or I didn't, couldn't remember at the time, but this is 800, hyper, 800 fill power, hyperphobic down. So there you go. All right, well, pretty much finished up. Uh, last few things besides my knife, which I forgot to show you, admittedly, uh, it's on the other side of the pack, but these are those items I was telling you about that need to be a little bit uh, more easily accessible. For example, in this pouch here, I keep my uh, UTG from Source. That's what you're gonna use to fill up your hydration bladder without removing it from your pack. So this will snap in where the uh, valve is and you just put your water bottle in upside down, hold it up, gravity will feed it into your hydration bladder. And at no point do you need to remove it from your backpack. Here next to it, let's have sunscreen. This is SPF 50, which uh, is plenty. You know, surprisingly being the ginger that I am, there's one instance where I put on some SPF 30 sunscreen, but on my back, I took my shirt off. I didn't put any on the back of my hand to really reach up there. And I got a bad sunburn where I didn't put the sunscreen on. It was a second degree sunburn shaped like Australia. It's really funny. I'll see if I, find, if I can find a picture. But the SPF 30, did a perfectly adequate job everywhere else. I did not get sunburned, despite being you know, outside and kind of working relatively hard for a few hours. Um, obviously, it was enough to give me a second degree burn on my back, but with SPF 30, no problems. So SPF 50, even overkill, which um, when it comes to the apocalypse, overkill is usually, at that point, just normal kill, I guess. Overkill is better. Whoops. Travel toothbrush, toothpaste. Uh, next time you go to the dentist, you should ask him if they have a travel toothbrush. I pretty much do it every time I go to the dentist now because these are really handy. Uh, it's better than my old uh, system that I had, which if you saw my old video, you've seen where I literally snapped another toothbrush in half. This is dedicated for this purpose pretty much. Um, and then you get a small thing of toothpaste as well. So. Keep that in there as well. And then here, this is my poop pouch. So I have a whole bunch of these stall mates and these are basically a flushable towelette um, or a baby wipe pretty much. So I have a bunch of those in there, like literally a bunch. And then as a backup, I also have a few wissy wipes, a few more for that matter. So Wissy Wipes, you add a little bit of water to them, they expand to a full-size towelette as well. And uh, Zeke and I are very fond of these. They, they're they going to be worth a lot in the apocalypse. I mean, <laughs> a thousand round box you can trade for at least a dozen AKs when shit hits the fan. So it's good to have. Alright, last thing. Another thing I can show you, here's the tube for the source uh, tactical hydration bladder. With the push of button, your valve comes off, and this is where you put the UTG so you can fill up your bladder. But more importantly, my knife. And this might make some people salty because one of the things that everyone recommended was a you know, fixed blade knife with a full tang. Well, that's what I got, but what they were probably really recommending was one much bigger than this one but 
for a while I was still expecting to carry this and so I wanted a lighter knife and so I bought one and this thing was 75 bucks so I'm not going to just not use it. Um, I think it'll get the job done in, com in conjunction with my hatchet here. There's really not much I can think of that I wouldn't be able to do. But this is the SC Knives Azula. Um, the Azula is apparently a South American word for the bullet ant. So it's a, it's a mean little knife and I got the version with the micarta handle. It's just way more comfortable that way. You have a loop and a little sheath that you can use as a neck knife or in my instance I just tied it directly onto the strap of my bag. So there you go. Uh, there is my knife and haters stay hating but that's what I'm going to be using for now. Um, I do have some uh, folders obviously. I carry one every day. I have one in my bug out roll um, and then I have my axe as well. Pretty steep hill. Same hill that I ran up with the backpack, and we're going to try taking the cart up it. <laughs> Definitely more straining on the leg than just carrying the backpack. Of course, my shoulders feel fine, but I'm really feeling in my legs. You know, carrying the car, all that good stuff, then boom, out of nowhere, bad guy starts shooting at us for, for some reason. We need to get out of here quick. Maybe a bear charging us. Well, not a big deal. Drop the car, run away. Well, anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. So, um, if you have any questions about anything, by all means, leave it in the comment section. I'd be happy to um, answer your questions. I'll also have links down there as well if you are interested in any of, any of this stuff. And then, um, as always, thank you guys for watching the Troublemakers Guild. My name is Levi. And two things. Remember, all gun laws are unconstitutional. And have a good rest of your day. See ya. There you go.